Hi guys and welcome to the, the Nordic Tourist. Um, today we start our first uh, part of our multi-part series of the Wild West of Finland. I am Glenn Murray. Yeah, hi, I'm Mark Wiltshire. In this multi-part series, we uh, take you on a trip around the adventurous side of the Etelapokiamman area in the wild west of Finland. Today we are heading to an area of the southern Ostrobotnian region that defies the stereotype that the region is flat. As you will see, the statement isn't fully true. Along its border with Satakonte to the south, there is an area where the topography differentiates from the typical open landscape of the state. One of only two gorges listed in the state alongside Birunpesa, or the Devil's Nest. Gatagan Canyon is a must-see if you are travelling in the southern Ostrobotnian region, as it varies greatly from the typical features of the area. The creeks and the inlets at the base of the gorge meander their way throughout, carving out the valleys and ridge tops that the park is known for. The year-round flow of water through the valley erodes the canyon walls away, which has been happening for hundreds of years already. That, and also exemplified by landslides in the canyon, are what gives the canyon its unique difference from the rest of the region. Today we are heading one hour, ten minutes drive southwest of the region's capital, Seinioki, to an area of the Kauhanevan Pohjakangas National Park where the gorge resides. After using Google to find your way to the gorge, you will see a sign on the side of the road pointing you in the direction of where to turn. Driving straight up the dirt road a few hundred meters, you will see a break in the trees, to which is the entrance to the gorge's car park. On entering the car park, there is usually enough parks for you to find a spot, but I have had times where there has been a lot of cars in the park already. On finding a park, for your car, the entrance to the National Park should only be meters from there and is well signed. Okay, hey guys, we just rocked up to the car park in Katakan Canyoni and we're just about to head into the, the, the walk tracks ourselves and uh, right now I'll just turn the camera around and you'll be able to see that there's signs everywhere and all the trails are marked. and. There's even an English information board right at the start of the canyon, which gives you a bit of background knowledge. Uh, there's signs that lead everywhere, and uh, it basically leads all through the park, shows you everything, so you can't really get lost in here, plus with all the snow and everything around, you can't, you can't really uh, get too lost in here. This is the left side of the path, and this right path here is leads into the actual canyon itself. So we might head into the left path just first to go and check out the lava before we then go and drop into the actual canyon and check it out ourselves. After walking several hundred meters down the footpath, you'll come to a sign that points you in the direction of the lava and the path towards the lava. Another positive about Katiga and Ganyani is that it is dog friendly also. Hey guys. Just rocking up to the, the lava in Gatigan Kanyani. Didn't take more than a, a minute of walking with like filming stuff and everything. So here we go, we're here now. Alright guys, once you leave the, the, the lava area just here, I didn't realise the last time I came here, there's actually a staircase 
very steep staircase down into the canyon just there. There's also some toilets back up towards the where we first came in near the service shed there that I didn't know were there also. Uh. We're at the bottom of the canyon right now and as you can see, like I've mentioned, it runs year round. It runs all year round. I hope you can hear me over the sound of the water because it is just, it's, like I said, it's running and it's still running and it has been running and it never stops running. It's frozen in parts like just here, but it's running underneath it. So it's quite a beautiful part of, of Kauhoyoki that I'm not sure too many people know about, but Let's get, let's get going up the canyon. From here on out, the canyon flattens out as it drops away in elevation. This part of the hike is quite easy going with the creek at your right almost its entire length. But don't be fooled as this is the easiest part of the trek. Walking on down through the canyon, you will soon also come across bridges that cross the creek at a few points. These are in good condition and are relatively new. So once you get down out of the top of the canyon area, you come into a more flat area. It flattens out and becomes a bit more uh, level. It stops flowing too much, but as you can see, this corner has a huge ice sheet over the top of it but if you just look there you've still got water running underneath and coming out the other side there which is absolutely beautiful so as you can see there's some all the oh, yeah, there's a lot of crossing bridges that actually cross the the canyon or the little creek in the bed at least in the bottom of the valley here and uh, yeah they're all quite good condition and they've been built very recently by the judging of that green timber there it's a uh This is where the hike starts to become interesting as it really picks up elevation gains fast. These come in the form of ridges, which as you'll see in winter can be quite dangerous as the ridges have very steep icy hills on either side. As you can see, if you look down there, they're not doable in winter without, uh, without those stairs being there because it's just way too slippy. That rope and those stairs are vital. We're on the top of the ridge right now. So if you look down into there, we just came from down in there. And that is just, that's just a vertical drop off there. Holy shibe. Well, you just saw that sheer drop on either side ridge line just there uh, yeah spikes are <laughs> walking spikes are a must oh, but luckily the worst of it's over or else I would have literally gone off down that hill oh god it does, just doesn't end uh, oh mother of Mary Okay, <laughs> it still goes, it just keeps going. What's wrong? Like, I'm surprised I haven't fell to my death during this uh, bit of a walk here. Put some grill mesh or drilled into the surface here or something. This is just... It's <laughs> not a not a nice thing, but I'm happy to be down. 
Oh, oh god, here we go. Another ridge again. Let's see if I can uh, go around it this time or do better. Looks like I'm gonna have to climb a sheer wall just to get around it. How many more ridges do we need to walk? Whose idea was this coming around? I don't know, Ella's. So there's another ridge line just there, and down there is the creek. I'm literally walking on the side of a hill just so that I don't have to walk on that death deathly ice track that's on a very small ridge across the top if you ever get a little bit of trouble walk on the soft snow side of the hill no matter what gradient you got because wow those ridges I just an oh, like trod it. People trodden over it all the time have created this ice track, which unless you've got spikes, which I don't, is death. These boots are just, they're not made for, for that ice on the side of the thing. I'm just gonna cut through here and go up. All right, I got to the trail. But if you come here in winter, avoid wearing hiking boots for summer and get yourself some proper hiking shoes because this is quite uh, slippery today. All right, we are up on that ridge that we just came through there. We are right here. And it seems like there is another sheer slide of death in there. So it looks like I'm gonna be sitting on my bike to go down this. Whoa! Like this, this is, yeah. Wow. And there I, oh. Oh, can survive again, but, oh wow. Maybe this canyon, at least this right side on the other side of the canyon, maybe maybe not so much of a good idea in winter without some spiky shoes and some walking sticks that used to be water but now now it's ice now we're going to find a way around an old waterfall basically oh no what is this this has been a quite taxing kind of a walk day today all i've done is slipped over three times <laughs> and uh, slid down a hill on my ass. A little waterfall section. Now, I believe this is what we're coming up to now. Coming up to a waterfall, this waterfall usually runs throughout the summer, but as you can see now, it's fully frozen over. Or is it? Underneath here, it's actually still flowing underneath the ice, and it never stops running. This is a typical ice waterfall in Finland. If we can break into it, no, I don't think, no, the ice is too thick here. Not this time, but this is an ice waterfall in winter.
All right, we're back into the car park. I barely got through that one. Like my <laughs> knee started hurting yesterday and now, oh my God. <laughs> Man, that was scary in some of it. If you had a slid off there, you would have just not stopped sliding or rolling. So I'm glad to be back at the car, but we'll see you in the next video.